Hi, my name is Meredith Fox, and I work for Texas A&M University in Data and Research Services. And this is our presentation uh, for the Tableau Conference, um, Transparency at a University, Using Tableau to Develop an Accountability Website. Here's a brief outline of the kinds of things we're going to talk about, um, what our accountability website is, and what we're doing with it. The background is that back in 2011, um, the Board of Regents for our university system was given a presentation um, with a lot of, uh, we call it accountability data, the time to degree for our students, our enrollment information, our, all sorts of different kinds of data. And our provost then took that and put it into a presentation of the kind of data she really wanted to make that available to everyone to increase um, our openness and um, just because of the increased scrutiny with higher education. And we wanted to take control of that conversation. Um, this is a quote from her. The world has changed. The public has lost trust in large enterprises. This includes higher ed. So we really wanted to show, take, take control of it is the best way to word that. For instance, um, we have campuses in addition to our main college station campus in Galveston and Cutter. And this year, we're adding a law school, and our health science center is coming back under the umbrella um, of our university. And we really wanted to show all of that information at once to really give a complete picture of what we're doing. And a lot of our just re reporting that we do to the state, it's all separated out. It really doesn't give a large view. And I, I also have a quote from my boss, Juan Garza, and I'll give it. It says, due to economic downturn and the changing view of higher education, um, and the inherent loss of trust in big enterprise, we must be able to show that we as an organization, what we are accomplishing, the impact we are having, and how it relates to our land grant mission. So I actually have three slides from the presentation that the provost did, and I included those to kind of show the information she wanted to provide. She did several open houses that were open to anyone and everyone, um, and these are the kinds of things she went over. Um, the biggest thing was make it visible, be open about what what we're using our money for, what, what we're putting out as far as students and research and everything. And then she included several example slides, and this is kind of what we had to work with. When they said create an accountability site, we want it to look like this. And I think with Tableau, we were able to create something much better than what she had. Um, obviously, she didn't have as much to work with. She did not have Tableau at the time. And she also wanted to go down to the department level. And, um, I included this slide because I'm going to show you our interpretation of this. This is a snapshot, essentially, of one of the departments. And we created a landing page. It's a couple of slides from now of our Tableau version of this. So um, how we chose Tableau, this is actually before I started um, with the university. I was back at the system. But they did have several other products come in and present. Um, one of the biggest things is one of the places wanted to re completely replace our existing pro uh, programs. Like we use Cognos for a lot of our reporting. And we really just wanted something to sit on top of that um, on our web page. And one of the competing products demos didn't work when they came to present. But when the guy from Tableau came, he was able to really take our data, throw it in really quickly, and have something to present immediately during the demonstration. And that really impressed everyone. So we went with it. So I've included several of our pages. This, um, as I talked about, is one of our landing pages. We um, wanted a summary of, for each college um, within our university of a lot of the most important data pieces, you know, our retention and graduation, our years to degree, indebtedness, and then our demographics. One thing to note as far as why it doesn't match the provost's request was that a lot of that data was not widely available among all of the colleges. And this was all data that we could get quickly and easily um, from our department, the kind of data that we deal with on a daily basis. So here is the one for the College of Engineering. I'm going to flip real quickly to the next one because it's the College of Education. And they actually said, we love what you did there. We have additional data we'd like to present. So I can't find my mouse. Our College of Education actually um, wanted some additional data shown. They had this information from the state about where our graduates end up. So they take a poll of all the teachers that are teaching in Texas and where they got their degree from. And so this shows you in Harris County, 
a little over 1,600 of their teachers received their degree from Texas A&M. And so we've gotten some requests from several of the colleges to have specific data. And they've really been impressed with Tableau and the things, the type of information we can present with us. When we first decided on Tableau and implemented it, um, it was done very quickly. It was, we want everything online now. And again, this is all before I was here, but it was, some of it was done by non-data people. There was not a lot of filters, if any filters, to let you really manipulate the data. It didn't go down to the department level. And it was also, a lot of the data was presented um, with the college along the axis. And now that we took it over, a group of us all started last year and have really been working on it, and we really wanted to look at each of the data sets, figure out how we want to present it, what story we want to tell. We've moved away from comparing colleges and departments because generally that's apples and oranges, and we really just want to show trends over time. And that's kind of the direction we're doing. We also got rid of all pies because I do not like pie charts. And previously they were being used, you know, you'd have five pie charts in a row, you know, for every year. Well, you can't see a trend that way. That was one of my pet peeves. This is one of, I think, the most interesting of our um, pages that we created just because last year, the in last summer, they decided to outsource all of our facilities um, departments. So it made a huge impact on the breakdown of staff, our number of staff, you can see this large decrease, but also if you look at things like education level, you can see that, for instance, the less than high school completely almost disappeared between 2012 and 2013, and that is why. And you can really see the effect that that decision made on gender, ethnicity, um, age, and that population that was outsourced who they were. And for our more, com you know, complex users, we want to show them the ability to also break this down and compare it. So you can look at a cross category of all of these groups um, over time. So I know we had a lot of interest in that when it first came out uh, last year right after the outsourcing. People wanted to know what had happened. And you can also take it down and see where those people were. A lot of them were under the vice president for administration. They were the, the most greatly affected. This is another one that I really like because We've been able to take a lot of our requests from departments and groups and even outside the university and refer them to this. We were providing a lot of reports on this data. Now we can send them all to the same place. And it is our retention and graduation. And what I really like about this is our ability to have this parameter that, you know, this is our university-wide. And if we take it down to, for instance, liberal arts, we can look at the, the cohort that started and how many stayed within the university but we can also look and see how many stayed within liberal arts. And then if we take it down to, say, the English department, we can see this is how many stayed within liberal arts, but of the English majors, this is how many stayed with English. And this kind of information has been really helpful for our departments in looking at their retention and a lot of reporting. We've been able to refer them here. Let me let this load. This is one that I was one of my first that I created. and. I can't remember if I mentioned yet, but I'm new to Tableau and, and self-taught. And I know that this is not that complicated of one, but it was one that I was proud of because I, I did it as one of my first projects. And we've had some requests for it. And it's basically our applied, admitted, enrolled information. And it has three different pages, and it toggles between them based on the parameters so that you can view a different scale and see where our students come from. And I've had another university request help with creating one like it, so that was a proud moment. And then also we had, for instance, a donor that wanted to give a scholarship for students from his home county. And they were asking for some data, and I was able to send them this website and say, oh, you can send him this link, and he can really look into where or how many students are coming from there and their all sorts of information, you know, their what level. In addition to just reporting on our own information, we also compare ourselves to our peers. And that's our Vision 2020 metrics. We have several of those. I included this one because I wanted to bring up how disappointed I was. When I first created this, I went through and found all of these other universities' logos. And they were so cute, little bees and other little logos that with our A&M logo. But there was some concern over copyright. So I had to take that down. But I did go out and find their official brand colors and um, create a custom color pal palette in Tableau to represent them well. So in addition to this one, you can see we've got several different ways that we compare ourselves to our peers. 
And then we also have our Action 2015 metrics, which is our goals for 2015, um, including our retention and graduation rates and where each of our colleges want to be by 2015 um, compared to the university, and we have retention and graduation rate goals. As far as our goals for the future, we really want to expand our audience. Right now we have a lot of internal customers, um, colleges and departments here at A&M that would like to know stats about their department and we refer them here instead of having to run reports. And I also have been going through our requests and figuring out, you know, we had six requests for this type of data this year so that in the future we can create something, put it out there on our website and not have to recreate the wheel every time a different department requests some information. But one of our biggest goals is, and one of our biggest struggles is then getting the actual data from different places on campus, which I know that every university probably has the same issue, every company really. Um, a lot of the data that the provost wanted, we're still trying to get. So there's a lot of things that we plan to add to our accountability website over the next couple of months to a year. Uh, budget data is one of the biggest things, and we're just trying to get the official budget data, but I know that will be a big and popular thing that people will want to look at for accountability to see how much money we're actually spending. Um, also, our job placement and salary data, we've had some issues with our um, career center data, and really, we get a lot of requests for that. You know, where are students going, and we're kind of reinventing the wheel on that. So that's something I would personally really like to work on for the next few months. Okay, this is, if this will load, hopefully, this is one of my new projects that I'm working on, and I'm really excited about it. It actually will not go on the accountability website. It's meant for um, decision making within the university, but our engineering college has a new goal. Um, they want to have 25,000 students by 2025. They call it the 25 by 25 plan. And to give you an idea, last fall our enrollment in engineering was a little over 11,000 students. So they want to more than double. And the easiest and most obvious way to do that is to increase their retention. So we wanted to know, well, where are these students going? And so this is, Tableau was great for creating a visual way to do this, and we sent this link to all the colleges, and they can really look at it, and it easily tells them what they want to know, if, if you understand it, which I'll explain what we're looking at. This is the fall 2006 cohort of first-time freshmen that started in the College of Engineering. There were 19, 000, or 1,974 students. And we wanted to know by the second fall they were enrolled, or by the second fall, where were they enrolled? So you've got a little over 1,400 that are still in engineering. You've got a good group of them, 210 that switched to general studies. And then you've got 192 that are no longer enrolled at the university. And we wanted to see where they went over time. What college are they moving to? And I really just wanted to use one of these circle charts. But it, I think it also it allows you to look at one particular year and in a, in a better visual way, um, since you can't see all these little slivers, to see where the students are and by percentages. Then this chart down here at the bottom shows you, okay, of these 210 that switched to general studies, what was the final outcome? So down here you know that 50 of them ended up not graduating. Several, a good number went to liberal arts, 38, and these are the degrees they got. And so we were able to send this out to all the colleges and they could look at it. And one of the questions they came up with well, I guess I'll get to that in a minute. First of all, here's by department, but then they wanted to know, or by college, we also did it on the department level. So, for instance, um, in engineering, is there a lot of movement between the different majors? Do a lot of people move from chemical engineering to other types of engineering? So we created this one to be able to show how many change. Uh, one of the reasons is because there's a conversation going on within the College of Engineering that maybe one of the differences the changes they'll make is that instead of declaring a specialty right away, they'll have all freshmen start as general engineering majors. And then when they become upperclassmen, they'll pick a major. And so they wanted to know, well, would a lot of students take advantage of that? You know, are there, is there a lot of movement within the colleges um, to a different major? And for instance, the College of Business does it this way. Everyone starts out in business as a plain old business major, and then when you declare um, you could declare a major when you switch to upper level of accounting, marketing, et cetera. And they wanted to know, is this a model we should switch to? Now, personally, as a data person, I don't want them to because it messes up my chart for business. It shows all of them changing their department because we have no idea of this 861 students, how many of them wanted to be accounting majors when they first started. 
but that's just my biased opinion. So the next question after we showed them this data, especially for the College of Science, who has one of the lower retention rates, was, well, yes, we have students switching away, but we also have students that are changing into our college. Um, and what I, my boss came in and said, oh, he, I think he really felt like we were going to have to reinvent the wheel to show that. And what was great is that, well, one of the biggest challenges in Tableau is getting it into the data you need to pull into Tableau. So I want to give a shout out to Margot Goff because she created our data sets uh, working with me to get it in the right format. And the way that she created it, I said, oh, I can have that for you in half an hour. So we flipped it to instead of starting college to filter and show by degree college. And then we're able to go back to the colleges that same afternoon and say, look, here's your students that ended up graduating the, the fall 2006 cohort. We still want to know of the ones who started in 2006, but they eventually got a degree in science. And this is where they were that first semester. So you can really tell where you're getting your students from if they transferred into your college. And so that was one of the things I love about Tableau is I, I loved that I was able to give them an answer quickly and provide that data to them without a lot of headache. Um, there are other groups at our university that are using Tableau. That's, it's been really great. We've kind of tried to get other groups involved. The College of Agriculture uses it for a lot of their reporting. HR is just getting started using it for theirs. And then our system office actually has a similar website to our accountability website. They call it um, an analytics. See, so it's analytics.tamu.edu. And they actually do put a college along the axis. They compare Texas A&M University with the other universities that are within our system. We have, you know, Texas A&M, West Texas A&M University, uh, Texas A&M in Texarkana, and Kingsville, different universities. And their main audience, I believe, is, is government. They show it to different senators and different things when discussing funding for the university. And one of their people is also going to be coming to the conference with us. We used to work together, so it's been really neat to call each other back and forth with our Tableau questions and work together. So that's really it. And I'll open it up for questions.